What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech, and I have a game here called Steep. It's in beta right now, open beta, so keep that in mind. That's the stage we're at. And I wanted to throw a huge shout out to Marco, who is a viewer here on the channel, who actually won a Gears of War code from me. And when he did, he replied with a payback, a good payback, which was a, an open beta code for Steep. And his only request was a performance review. Actually, he didn't even say I had to do a performance review, but after jumping into the game, I decided we should do it, so stick around. To get things started off, we have the test bench, which is going to be an i7 3770K, overclocked to 4.4 GHz, mated to an ASUS P8Z77 motherboard with 16 GB of DDR3 RAM. Yeah, I got it this time. And it is all powered by an AX860i from Corsair. And the game is running on a PNY 500GB solid state drive. The cards we're going to be testing is the XFX RX480. It is the GTR trim and on the other side the green side we have the EVGA GTX 1060 super super clock and of course that is both the 8 gigabyte model for the RX 480 and the 6 gigabyte model for the GTX 1060. The drivers for the cards are going to be the 16.11.4 for the GTR and on the Nvidia side we have the driver version 375.95. The benchmark run was actually made simple by Ubisoft and the developers of Steep by putting in a built-in benchmark which you can access by going into the options menu and either clicking display or clicking graphics options. I was able to get this done a lot quicker and easier this time around instead of having to go through and find a good spot to benchmark. The tests are all going to be done in 1080p, 1440p, and 4k. The settings are kind of interesting in the fact that I didn't actually just set it to ultra and leave it there. After playing around with the game, I realized that if you set it to ultra, it turns everything to max, which is completely unnecessary, especially once you start bumping up to 1440p and 4K resolutions. So what we did was we did turn off VSync, of course, and after we set the resolution, we went in and for 1080p all the way through 4K, we went ahead and adjusted some stuff. So all the settings are at ultra until we get down to about the ambient occlusion area where we did turn on ambient occlusion and for multi-sample anti-aliasing we took that and knocked it down from times 8 to times 4 and on FXAA we're running FXAA plus and we turn anisotropic filtering all the way off when it was at times 16. Hopping into the benchmarks at 1080p, the XFX scored a minimum of 49 FPS with an average of 62 and a max of 73, while the EVGA GTX 1060 had a minimum frame rate of 57 with an average of 67 and a max of 94. Obviously at 1080p we have a win for the GTX 1060 and this continues at 1440p. The GTR had a minimum frame rate of 28 with an average of 40 and a max of 47, while the GTX 1060 had a minimum of 38 FPS with an average of 46 and a max of 60. It's quite apparent here that the GTX 1060 completely wipes the board at 1440p. Now, Keep in mind here that both of these actually end up being very playable at 1440p, surprisingly enough, if you turn the multi-sample anti-aliasing off and the FXAA off. Now, in my opinion, those settings at 1440p aren't even necessary. I couldn't really notice much of a difference in my play with those off. Now, at 1080p, they are still very noticeable, so you will want to keep some multi-sample anti-aliasing on, in my opinion. Bumping up to 4K, the G GTR had a minimum frame rate of 21 with an average of 23 and a max of 25. While the GTX 1060 had a minimum frame rate of 18 with an average of 24 and a max of 28. Now neither of these cards were able to find a playable 4K solution for me even with turning off things like anti-aliasing and so on and so forth or even turning 
textures down. So I wouldn't even really worry about that, but that's just there for sake of argument. In conclusion, this game is in beta and there are no official drivers support from either AMD or Nvidia, so keep that in mind. We'll have to revisit once the full release is out. Now, as far as the game goes, if you guys are into any sort of physics-based exploration games, definitely think about picking up at least the open beta or trying to get into it this weekend and maybe even think about picking up the game. It is actually very fun and surprisingly has some very very good physics in it. I, I was I was blown away by how good the the movement felt and how almost realistic. I, I did snowboard when I was younger and I was like, whoa, and like even seeing the animations of the body and the way the board reacts to the snow, pretty impressive. Let me know what you guys think of not only the game, but also what you guys think about the performance results in the comment section below. If you're interested in individual reviews of either of these cards, check them out somewhere around here or up here or wherever they may be. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday.